Welcome to the Narrow Road of James Bilt. Hope you're very well. Thanks for joining me. The boat here moved earlier this morning, uh, Ian's boat. So it's for the first time I've actually seen my boat like this in this kind of view in the water. Um, it's certainly the first time I've seen it with only kind of predominantly two colours on it. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm starting to think it's uh, looking all right but it's highlighted the fact I need to sort out the colour of the windows because um, they look ghastly in that kind of mock gold. I think they're just aluminium frames, but they, yeah, they're really not very nice, so I need to sort that out. Um, but before I do that, I need to continue with the red oxide. And the next thing to do is the roof. Um, I've started peeling some bits back, uh, and I mean peeling back because it's coming off really, really easily. Um, so I'm deciding not to sand it down because the paint, on, the, the, the base paints are just are, have just not taken to the roof at all. So if I was to put any paint on it, it's just gonna come off, you know, either next year or the year after or some sometime like that. Around the sides here, this bit's okay, but it's the actual top of the roof. Um, and I'm not sure why it's a bit why it's gone like that. It might be because, well, these are the options. It's either because it's the original paint and it's 50 years old now, um, and it's just, you know, had it and it's coming off really easily, or it was put on in the wrong conditions uh, and it didn't take properly. The first kind of base coats didn't take properly, uh, or it's just really crap paint uh, and it was put on fairly recently and just not very good. So those are the kind of the main options, I'm guessing. Um, but it is coming off really simply with the multi-tool in kind of quite long strips. Um, so it's definitely worth the effort in doing it. Um, it's probably going to take some time. I'm just going to do it in stages because that seems to be uh, mentally the, uh, the most, well, the, the, the better way for me to go about it anyway, certainly. So I'm going to finish my tea and then get back on the roof and carry on taking some of that paint off. I don't know if anyone can offer any suggestions of how I could straighten this bar, um, but it's quite it's quite out of line, and it's only there. It doesn't look like it's been hit from that side though, so I'm kind of well, I'm a bit flummoxed as to how that's happened. It looks like it's been pulled that way, as opposed to pushed that way. But, um, yeah, if anyone's got any ideas how I can do it, obviously I can't use a hammer because that won't work. Um, I'm thinking about maybe heating it up and clamping it between something, but uh, I don't really know. So yeah, if anyone's got any bright ideas, that'd be very useful. But this is the uh, the roof. I've tied it, well, I've cleaned, cleared it off. Now I need to really kind of sort it out. There's a lot of flaked paint on this. Well, I started taking off some of the paint from the roof here, and unlike the sides where it was quite well put on, up here it seems to be the opposite. Um, there are loads of areas where it's just flaking up. It looks very different to the surface uh, that it was on the walls. So I got the multi-tool out and started taking a bit off and it was just coming up in really large sheets. Um, so it kind of means that if I was to just sand this down, sand kind of the bad areas down, there's just so much air under here. You can kind of feel it in certain pocket, in certain little spots. You can just tell it's not, it's just been put on badly. And I think if I was to put anything on top, even after sanding it down, I'm, I'm going to have exactly the same problem. So I've decided to take off pretty much all the bad areas. I mean, this stuff here just shows you how easily it comes up. 
I barely have to do anything and it's just kind of peeling right off. Once I discovered this, you can't blame me for getting it all up because, you know, you just can't sand that back. It's going to come up again. It's just, there's just nothing holding this in. I mean, it's just a gravity, maybe, a bit of hope. Well, I think this is good news um, because on this section of roof and on that section of roof, um, the paint is not coming off nearly as easily as that section there. So um, this, and I've given it a go in loads of little spots, as you can see, it's just no, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's very different. So I'm hoping this one can just be sanded back quite a lot and I won't have to take up all of it because it's taken quite a while to do that. Um, and bear in mind, it's still gonna have loads of coats of paint put on it. I'd rather just sand it all back or sand back these kind of troublesome areas, put some rust treatment on them, and then go on with the red oxide. So I think it saved me a bit of a job in terms of taking all the paint back. It just so happened on that front panel, it came off really quite easily. So I carried on doing it, but as long as it's a, uh, as long as there's no kind of bumps and things, or as long as those aren't very noticeable, at the moment I can really feel all that stuff really is. But once it's really sanded back, it should be much better. Well, this has taken an awful long time sanding, but it's worth it because it's, I mean, I'm not going to worry about bits like this, which is the important thing is that it's smooth all the way over. Well, it's been a uh, nice day out here today. I've managed to get, well, I say quite a bit. I've done half of the roof. I've broken it down into four sections. So I've done half of them. Um, and basically, as you saw, the uh, furthermost front section came off in like massive chunks. Um, so I was expecting the whole roof to be like that, but it wasn't the case. That was the only section that's been like that. The others I've picked away at, and it all looks to be, actually okay um, there's a few little spots that need well probably is about 20 spots in each section that need to be uh, kind of had some treatment done to them so it needs a bit of vac tan um, and then you know then the painting over but it means I don't have to strip down all of the all the paint uh, I can just do away with sanding down um, some of those areas so that's a bit of a that's a bit of a blessing so I'm kind of doing that I can do maybe another two sections tomorrow night and then I can put the red oxide on uh, possibly on Wednesday and then undercoat down on Thursday. No, I'm not here on Thursday. Undercoat down on Friday and then possibly we can look to do some top coats um, maybe on the Easter, on the bank holiday weekend. So it's a three day weekend coming up and I'm hoping to be here for all of it. So. I should be able to get top coat done then and that means I can get the solar panels down um, and uh, yeah that's all pretty good. I haven't ordered my solar charger yet you won't be surprised to learn 
uh, it's all about budget at the moment so I'm just trying to work work things out uh, so uh, but payday is coming up soon so uh, that may help um, so I've got to get that done um, I still need to get the uh, the boiler installed I've spoken to Dale he's going to send me a link of what he thinks I should get put put on the boat so um, that will be good uh, but his availability he said he's he's kind of got a few days um, over the next kind of month that he can fit me in so um, fingers crossed that should be fine uh, the plan tonight I got some wood filler um, so uh, it's kind of a two-part system um, a little bit like car body filler that I've used on the outside of the boat um, but there's a few um, of the seams in here on the uh, on the walls that I want to correct um, I've used poly filler on them and I, I, I kind of half expected it to be the case it's fine for filling some of the larger gaps behind it because it's quite cheap stuff but it always cracks so I've got this two-part system which I'm hoping is a bit more durable um, with a bit more elasticity in it which will help with the vibrations of the boat so um, I'm going to start to put a bit of that on tonight um, what else uh, my solar panels are in here I need to uh, just double check I've got enough cables for them uh, if not I need to I need to order some more of that and the connectors and things like that and in terms of how the cables are going to come through I think I'm going to put them through the mushroom vent here uh, which is a bit of a um, safe way of doing it and then putting them through this way but when i get a second array of panels kind of here um i could i could put them through the mushroom vent here but then it's not going to be easy to feed it all the way back down that way so i might put the cables in ahead of it now whilst i whilst it's probably easier with all the trim and stuff put on it um i might do a cable run uh in preparation for the solar panels uh, it's just something I've been thinking about today whilst I've been out up on the roof. Um, but the, uh, yeah, I'm quite, I, I don't think the roof's going to be too much of an ordeal. Um, these side bits here are really quite important. My mother keeps telling me when she walks past canal boats now, she's always kind of at this type of height. So she's, um, she's kind of remarked that that needs to be as good as it can be. And I, I, I'm inclined to agree with her. The problem is, is that the rail is right kind of in that area and the rail is not in the best nick and it's not particularly easy to sand. Um, despite, I mean, I need I need like a long strip of sandpaper would be the best way to do that, I reckon. Um, but yeah, it's not very easy to sand and there's a lot of it. So it's just one of these things, kind of take it a little bit at a stage at a time and it kind of slowly gets done, I guess like the rest of things on the boat. Anyway, until tomorrow, look after yourselves. Bye-bye.